The Darkness Has Fallen Darkness Falls is one of the top mod packs for 7 Days to Die, going beyond just being a simple mod and instead totally rejigging the whole 7 Days to Die experience. Crafted by the extraordinary developer Kane, it is so much fun, and I'm going to show you how to install and get Darkness Falls running for yourself. I'm not going to spoil too much, but uh, yeah, you get stuff like that. You get demonic zombies as well. And of course, you get better weapons so you can actually take care of them. Such as laser weapons. Oh, I know. who doesn't like to have a nice cool sword as well to go out and kill the demonic zombies that are around that are so much tougher than the regular zombies. I heartily, heartily suggest that you try out this game and just... Uh, see where it takes you because it is difficult now this is a little bit of end game stem stuff of course because i'm down in the bunker but you will definitely be experiencing this throughout your gameplay at least if you survive long enough really cool things he's included is a bunch of new vehicles there were always new vehicles but you know he's added on a bunch extra that you can see in some other mods as well oh i love personally i love the duster even though it's a big pain to actually fly around and i don't think i'll be able no i don't think i'll be able to gain much air here maybe if i can no all right so you probably want to be well that's one way of parking don't you think so you know you save some parking fees here two in one <laughs> you're probably gonna have to get some practice with a duster but there's a bunch of vehicles that you can actually take for a spin or well uh, let's let's go with something like this Hello? yeah let me go on this instead sounds great works great and i'm unfortunately almost naked but you know that's how things go you'll also notice that the UI has changed as well. There's a lot of changes. It has changed how how the skills work as well. There's a bunch of changes in here that you'll see as you go through. There's a, a lot more tool slots here. He's shifted the health and stamina and the hunger and thirst bars as well. And all looks just neater than vanilla. And there are cows. What else do you require? And now that you've seen a bit of the game, let's dive into the actual install. But if you enjoy my guides, I really do appreciate just hitting that like button, of course subscribing, ringing the notification bell helps you get notified when I have new videos, making that easier for you. It's only through the great support that I have from the community that I can keep on making these guides and videos every single week. And if you would like to support further, head over to patreon.com slash video 42 and join up. Or below the video, tap the join button to become a supportive YouTube member. Beyond my gratitude it also gives you cool roles in my discord you've joined that right as well as access to my many game servers such as seven days to die arc and other games i wrote it in be it scum subsistence or something else we will be doing this through the seven days to die mod launcher by Sveri. it's probably the easiest way to get darkness falls if you don't have the mod launcher make sure it goes to seven days to die mod launcher.org i have a link in the description and get it installed you basically just scroll down and download it for windows and linux and well mac os is coming soon he's got a slick new website as well so the website looks great it has some basic instructions about download installer extracted run it and so far it's pretty straightforward when you start it up, it looks something like this. It'll tell you which alpha version we're looking at, which is alpha 20 in this case. You can change it to some early versions if you do want to do mod packs there. There is a bunch of different mod packs that you can access. We're going to go down here to Darkness Falls and click on it. You see it has a red X, which means that nothing has been installed. There's a few things that you really need to look into and a lot of people forget about it. So I'm going to highlight it again. First of all, read through this. The important thing is actually down here. It says seven days to die. Vanilla or well, version required is 20.2. This is really important because this current mod version 4.01 will only run on 20.2 currently. This changes as he updates the mod, so they have to match between the vanilla version and the mod pack version. When you install the mod pack, you first require a copy of 7 Days to Die. And generally what you do is you copy from an existing copy. You could download it from Steam, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to have 20.2 at all, which means that you have to copy it from an existing copy. And if you have that for 20.3, it simply won't work. So how do you fix that? Well, go into your Steam client, you right click, go to properties, betas, and then select 20.2 stable and Steam will install the 20.2 for you. 
wait until that is done until it says something like this and it's completed or whichever version the system requirement is. Once that is done, you basically hit install game copy. What it's going to do and it'll tell you down here that it's copying from your vanilla into its own folder so that it will not impact your vanilla gameplay. It's kept entirely separate. But for that to happen, you have to get a copy from your vanilla. So it's copying into Darkness Falls and this is gonna take a while. So just let it run. It's copying something like 10 gigabytes. Once it's completed, like in this case, it says that mods folder has been detected, which could be from previous mods, because I do have some mods on my vanilla as well. It's asking whether it should delete it, which is probably what you should do, because otherwise the old mods that you have are likely to interfere with Darkness Fall. So you just hit yes, and now you're gonna have a green tick. Green tick does not mean that it's ready to play. It's a bit of a weird thing from the interface standpoint, but it all means that now you have a copy of seven days to die that it's actually recognizing we're not done yet there are some options here you can actually tick in i wouldn't tick in anything like refresh mods you shouldn't use esc update registry is good say gay all games local to mod is helpful so leaving these ones as they are we're gonna pre-sync the mod we're going to click it and it says the mod is not downloaded yet because we only have the seven days to die copy remember and we, yes we would like to download it now and it's going to connect to where Kane has put the modlet or mod pack rather and it's going to be downloading it and once that is done you can see that down here it's downloading file two out of well thousands of files so this is going to take a while just sit back and wait after it's downloaded it will actually start to install it and it'll start putting messages here in this box which says it's copying it over but that's going to take a while Eventually, you're going to see something like this. It's copying the folders in, it's copying the folder in, and copying is done, and everything seems to be fine. There's no longer any loading symbol and everything, and this means that the mod pack has been installed. You're essentially done. Let's start up, and the way to do that is click play mod, and it'll give some information and say that it's actually starting up. You'll see what looks like vanilla starting up, and something like this where it switches over to darkness falls you see darkness falls version 4.01 currently for me and of course i'm running alpha 20.2 because we have to make sure that these are in sync now there are two ways to play the game we're going to start with a multiplayer and then go into single player multiplayer go to join game and it'll show a lot of here and this is including modded which you don't want to do you want to do connect to ip and you want to get the ip from the server creator that you have just put in the ip put in the port and click connect and you'll be loading into whatever server you've selected. We're going to go back here into single player where you do new game. And there's a few things that you want to keep in mind here. One is that while you normally can do a random generated world and they have actually fixed that or Kane has actually fixed that with an experimental patch that allows the game to properly generate a random world that has all the required progression PUIs and such as the bunkers you so you can get the laser workbench and so on. This is however experimental. I haven't tried this myself, but hopefully the patch fixes it. If you try this out and you have issues or if it works, do come back and leave me a comment on the video to let me and other people know. What I've done in the past and what I generally do is that I look at the different sized maps that we have pre-generated or that Kane has pre-generated and included in Darkness Falls. We see the large one here, which is a 12K. We then have a medium, which is 10K. And we have a small, which is 8K. And I don't, oh, he has a very small as well. That is 6K as well. So you can choose whichever you want to do. I would generally select, uh, suggest that if you're doing single player, do an 8K because that's more than enough. If you're doing a big multiplayer, you could do a 10K or potentially 12K. These are maps that Chain has generated and made sure that all the correct things are there, that has all the PIs that you need to progress in the storyline. And then you have all these others. So let's start actually because we're just gonna show it very quickly. We're gonna do a, let's do a very small. You can of course select, you know, the difficulty settings, how many zombies alive, the animals, the claim count. All the other things that you can normally do in seven days to die as well. And we're going to just start it here and it'll load the game data in. 
Often, it will also ask you whether to allow access to the Windows firewall. I always suggest just hit allow access because you might have some issues otherwise as you are inviting your friends to play on your instance, etc. And if you haven't ticked that in, you have to go manually find out where to actually add that in Windows Defender. So I generally just hit accept. Loading into Darkness Falls, like many mod packs, is significantly slower than vanilla because there's so many assets that it has to load in and get things done. So we're going to hit continue here. And there's some information here that you want to read. Problem use playing it. You'll see it looks just like the regular game, but with a lot of additions. And personally, I think it's a awesome mod i think kane has done a great job i personally like the addition of the higher level research bunkers the pis all those armor weapons you know the power armor you have the laser weapons and you just see all those cool zombies around the demonic zombies the demons coming in you know the succubi the incubi and it's just awesome to fight them off as they attack your base and just try to wreck you but make sure to leave that like on the video and tell me your thoughts of darkness falls in the comment section Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.